What's going on guys, Corey from Yoda Expedition. Right here we have our brand new auxiliary power kit and our brackets for the 5th Gen 4Runner. We're gonna go ahead, show you everything that's included in the kit, we're gonna get it assembled, and then we're gonna show you how to install it in the 4Runner. So before we get into the whole kit, I just wanna go over both styles of brackets that we have. Uh, the first one being a universal bracket. It is a blank slate, there's no holes on it, and uh, you can lay it out however you want with whatever you're planning on putting on there. So with that being said, the next one is the bracket for our full kit. It's laid out perfectly to accommodate all of these things and fit perfectly inside the 5th Gen 4Runner. If the universal bracket is something that you would be interested in, click the link in the description and I have a video showing you how to install just this. So before we get into everything that's included in our kit, I just want to answer why would you want something like this for your 4Runner? Um, if you have a bunch of off-road accessories, lights, fridge, wench, compressor, the list goes on, this is going to make it super easy to get those things wired and it's going to make it super clean as well. You're not going to have a rat's nest of wires running to your battery and then into your um, cabin. You're going to have a uh, fuse box right underneath the hood, everything wires right into that and then you're going to have one wire running into the cabin with your switch panel. It has eight different switches on it and we have plenty of different options for uh, descriptive stickers that you can put on there and it's just going to make it really clean and really easy to add aftermarket accessories. So here on the table is everything included in the kit, which is going to be everything needed to get started on adding aftermarket accessories to your 4Runner. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything that comes with it. So first things first, we have the bracket here. This is made specifically for the 5th Gen 4Runner and all of these parts to mount on it. We have slots for the wiring to go through. We have threaded holes to mount everything super easily. These holes here are gonna be where your main power comes through and we have grommets included for that. Just a really nice and simple setup. Here we have the fuse box and you have eight different locations from 30 amps down to five amps and all of your wiring connections there. We have the switch panel, which you're gonna be running to the inside of your 4Runner with eight different buttons, the bracket for that, and then all of the options that you can put onto the switch panel. Here we have all of our main wiring, including an 80 amp breaker. Here we have the wiring for uh, the controller and turning the fuse box on. We have some zip ties here for wire management. And then we have our hardware and uh, the grommets. All right, so now we're going to take this stuff. We're gonna show you how to mount it onto the bracket. Um, we do have an option on the website where you can get all of this stuff pre-assembled. Um, and ready to go right into your 4Runner. So if that's something you wanna do, we have that option, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get this stuff mounted. All right, so we got everything here on the table we need to mount onto the bracket. We got our hardware dumped out here. First thing I'm gonna do is just take these rubber grommets and I'm going to put those into the bracket here. And this is so you don't have to worry about any of your power wires rubbing through on the bracket and giving you an issue later down the line. So easily put those in. Now we can go ahead and mount the fuse box to the bracket. So looking at the hardware, you're gonna have two 13 millimeter bolts. Those are gonna be for mounting the bracket to the 4Runner. Those are gonna go right here in these two holes. You're gonna have a carriage bolt with a washer and a nut. That is also for right here. That's gonna be going in your fender well. And then you have some Allen bolts here. This is going to mount the breaker and the fuse panel. So the two shorter screws are gonna to be to bolt the fuse box to the bracket. And then the longer screws are gonna be for the breaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff mounted on and take this off. The, the lid's held on with four Phillips head screws. So when you put this on, just line up your slots. Pretty simple. And go ahead and tighten this down. Next up, we're gonna get the uh, breaker installed. So you gotta take off this cover. 
There's clips on both sides. Go ahead and pull that off. And we're gonna be putting the uh, breaker in this orientation here. Go ahead and bolt this down. All right, so we got the fuse box and we got the breaker mounted to the bracket. Now we're gonna go ahead and start doing some wiring. So I'm gonna start with the short power wire and we're gonna be running that from the breaker to the fuse box to this uh, post right here. And that's gonna be going on this post here from the breaker. So go ahead and remove this nut. Go ahead and feed this through. And we'll get this mounted up. Go ahead and tighten this up with a 10 millimeter socket. And we can feed this through the slot and get this mounted up. All right, now we can take the longer power wire. We're gonna be hooking that up to the other post on the breaker. So go ahead and take this off. Go ahead and feed it through our grommet. Give it a good bend. Tighten that down. So we got both power wires ran to the breaker and the fuse box. Now we can go ahead and we can run the ground wire. That's gonna be going to the other post here in the fuse box, and then that'll be running to your battery. So let's go ahead and get that mounted up. All right, so we got two more wires to hook up to this, one going to the switch panel, and this one that's gonna be going to the fuse box inside your 4Runner. Plug that in there. We'll route this through. Same with this one. All right, so if you get the uh, kit pre-assembled, it's gonna come just like this with everything that we just wired in, and you'll be ready to go and mount it into your 4Runner. All right, so before we put the bracket over here with the uh, power kit, we're going to need to move the fuse box if you have a 20 to 23 model 4Runner. So originally, it's going to sit right here, and as you can see, we moved it back there. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you some old clips showing you what you need to do, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take that off because I need to get to the firewall. There's a grommet back there. We're gonna have to pull that out and run some wires through. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of my way. So on the 2020 and newer models, you're gonna find we have a small uh, fuse box right here located behind our bigger fuse box in the engine bay. There's gonna be two bolts holding that on. We're gonna be removing those. And once we have those bolts removed, you're gonna find on the fuse box, um, there is two little tabs that you're gonna be pressing down, one on each side. And that's gonna remove the fuse box from the bracket itself. And we're gonna take that apart so we can modify our bracket. You can see right here, there's a tab. Push that down. There's one on both sides. And then you could pull the bracket off from the fuse box. All right, so when it comes to modifying this, what we're gonna be doing is cutting off this little locating tab here. Uh, you can either cut it off or you can bend it so that it is flat. And then that's pretty much all you need to do 
um, to the bracket, you can bend this straight. See how this is angled out? If you were to bend this so that it was completely flat, it would fit a little bit better back in the tight spot there, but you don't have to do that. The only th other thing that we need to remove is this um, clip here for your wiring harness. That is going to prevent the fuse box from going back far enough, so you do have to remove that as well. And to get that disconnected from your uh, wiring harness, I'm just taking a stubby flathead and I'm putting it in the back here where the clamp connects and I'm pushing. At the same time, pulling out. And you can see that's now disconnected. And we're gonna go ahead and remove that completely from the fender well here. Just wiggle it back and forth and pull it out. Moving back to the bracket, like I said, if you want, you can just grab this tab and bend it so that it is flat. If you want, you could cut that off. But that's really all you need to do to that in order to get it to fit back here. And then we're going to be putting our bolt right there in the threaded hole the one all the way in the back, right underneath your hood strut. You're only gonna be using that bolt. You're not gonna be using the um, bolt on the bottom anymore. But that'll be plenty to hold the fuse box where it needs to be. So here's the fuse box installed. You can see it is a bit tight, like I mentioned. But if we do bend the bracket here so that it is straight. It'll bring it closer to the fender and then you'll have more room over here in between your other wiring. And here we are with the bracket now bent straight. You can see we have a little bit more room here between this plug and our fuse box. Fits a little bit nicer. So you can see right here on the firewall, we have a rubber plug. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out and we're gonna be running some wiring through there. So we're gonna take the wiring for the switch panel and we're gonna take this single small power wire that's gonna be running to the interior fuse box. We're gonna take the grommet that's included and we're gonna go ahead and put both of those through there. And then we're gonna be running both of these wires through that hole in the firewall. All right, so I got this over here. I'm gonna take my one wire. I'm gonna run that through the hole in the firewall. Um, you're gonna have to go inside and uh, see if you can see it coming out and grab it, pull it through the rest of the way. Then we're gonna go ahead and feed the second wire through as well. And then we can put our fuse box back into the location and then we can go ahead and mount the bracket in its uh, proper location as well. So I'm gonna start with this, feed it through as much as I can. And then I'm gonna go inside the truck and look for it down by the brake pedal and uh, hopefully I can see it sticking out somewhere. All right, so we got both wires through the firewall. I'm gonna go ahead now and push that grommet up to the firewall and get that in place. And then we can go ahead and put the fuse box back here on the bracket. Got the fuse box back in place. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take our bracket. We're gonna get this in place. And then um, once we have this mounted, we can pull the wires inside, um, pull those in as much as we can. So this is gonna go ahead and sit right like this. We're gonna be putting two bolts through here and then one carriage bolt down through the fender well. All 
All right, so we got those two 13 millimeter bolts started. We're gonna go down in the fender well now. We're gonna get the carriage bolt started. So let's go down there. So we're gonna be looking at this hole right here. Our slot on our bracket is gonna line up with that. We're gonna go ahead and take the carriage bolt. So go ahead and tighten that up with a 10 millimeter. Bottom bolt is tight. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these up. This is gonna be a 13 millimeter. All right, so we got that bracket fully installed. Now we can go ahead and work on the switch panel. So we have the bracket for that, and that's gonna mount with four tiny little screws. So you can see, we'll go ahead and get this mounted up. And then we actually already have this installed on our Forerunner. We just put some double-sided tape here on this, and there's a nice little spot on the dash. We can stick it. I'll show you where we have ours. You can do the same, or you can put it wherever you would like. As you can see, like I said, we have our bracket uh, double-sided taped to this little ledge here on the dashboard. It's a pretty good spot for it. And then we have the wire running back and it's gonna be tucked in behind the weather stripping. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these interior pieces out so we can get the wire ran up through here. We can get the uh, wire connected for our switch panel and then get that power wire hooked into our fuse box underneath the dashboard. So the fuse box underneath the dash, I have the cover for it here. We're going to be going into one of the ignition power fuses. So you have IN or IGN, which is a 10 amp, or you have IGN number two. So we're gonna use either one of those. That's gonna give this power when the ignition is on. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this onto the wire that comes in from uh, the engine compartment. And we're going to plug this into the fuse box. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this on. Once you got that connection crimped, we're gonna go ahead and route this in a way so that it's not gonna interfere with any of our pedals. And then we're gonna plug it into that IGN 10 amp fuse location. All right, so we have that plugged into the fuse box. Next, we have to route the wire that's gonna be going to our switch panel here. So I'm gonna be pulling off this uh, plastic piece here, as well as this one here that goes on the side of your uh, foot. And then we're gonna be tucking the wire back behind this weather stripping, connecting it, and then putting our weather stripping on top so you can't even see it. So this piece here just clips in. Just get your fingers under it and work your way down, popping it off. Like that. All right, so to get this off, in between this and your dead pedal, there's gonna be a plastic nut. Um, it doesn't look like a nut, but it does thread off. So just go ahead and turn this out. Once you have that plastic nut thing off, go ahead and pull this cover towards you. Now we can go ahead, we're gonna be routing our wiring up through here. Go ahead, plug this in, screw this together, and we'll go ahead and tuck this back in here. Put our weather stripping back on. There we go. So this isn't the only way that you can mount this. There's plenty of extra wire here. If you wanna put it maybe like on the center console area, or if you don't wanna do this, you could drill a small hole and run it into the dashboard, but it, we didn't wanna drill any holes. That's why we double-sided taped the bracket to the dashboard as well. But I'm gonna take all of this extra wire, I'm gonna ravel it up, zip tie it together, 
and I'm going to hide it behind this panel here so it doesn't get in the way, you don't see it. This plastic nut piece, instead of threading it back on, all you need to do is put it on the threaded stud and just push it right in. Go ahead and put this panel back on. Clip it back in. Wiring in the interior is done. Back out here on the, in the engine compartment, we're gonna be hooking up our power and ground to our battery. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna route all of this stuff nicely. Try to tuck it away as much as possible so you really don't see it. And the, the power we're gonna be running uh, over here hooking it up right here on our terminal. All right, so we got the power hooked up to the positive. I'm gonna take the negative. I'm gonna route it behind the bracket here for the fuse box. And we're gonna connect it right here onto our ground on the chassis. All right, so at this point, the whole kit is hooked up and uh, you can start wiring in your accessories. But first we're gonna just go in, we're gonna turn the ignition on, make sure that the switch panel is turning on and everything's working properly. And then we can come out and start hooking up our light bars. Turn the ignition on. Switch panel is obviously working. So we're gonna go ahead and start wiring up our light bars. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and start wiring up our light bars. We have a 30 inch Baja Designs in our front bumper, and we have a 40 inch Baja Designs up on our roof rack. And um, I'm gonna put the part number right here for this specific wiring harness that we're using for both of those light bars. Makes it super easy to wire those in with our switch panel. So I'm gonna go ahead, and uh, I already have the wiring tucked away here. I'm gonna get that out, and we're gonna run both of those light bars into our 30 amp uh, fuse locations. So here we have the wiring harness for both of our light bars, one being right here, the other one right here, and then these two wires are for the back lights. Um, the light bars have a back light setting, uh, so we're going to wire those together on a separate switch so that we can turn the back lighting on separately than the actual uh, main light bar function. So I'm going to go ahead and put the main light bar function in the 30 amps, and then I'm gonna wire the back lighting into probably a 10 amp. So if you look at our bracket, you can see we have this cut out here, and this is intentional so that you have room to get your hand down in there and get to your wiring and feed it up through here into the fuse box. Our initial um, design was straight across and it was a little bit difficult, so we added this and it's much nicer. Go ahead, put the black wire in the negative terminal. And in this case, the white wire into the positive terminal. It might be red, depending on what wiring harness you're using for your lights. All right, so we got both light bars wired in here to our 30 amp locations. Here I have the wiring for the backlight. And then this harness here is for our Raptor lights. So I'm probably gonna tie this and these together so it's on a single switch. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the ends off of this and put it either in a five or a 10 amp. And I'm gonna tie this on there as well.
All right, we got all of our wiring into our fuse box. I'm gonna go ahead now back inside and we're gonna uh, label all of our buttons accordingly to how we have them laid out here on the fuse box. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out where you have your lights located in accordance with your switch panel. If you compare this to the fuse box up there, it goes five amp, five amp, 10 amp, 10 amp, 20, 20, 30, 30. So this one here is our uh, backlighting and Raptor lights. This one here is our light bar on the roof. And this one here is our light bar on the front bumper. So I'm gonna go ahead now and label those. So we're gonna be using the DRL button, the roof button, and the bumper button. All right, we got all of our switches labeled. If you don't fill them all up, there is a couple blanks on here available. Um, so you can use those just to temporarily fill the area so it's not blinding you. Um, but going into that, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to switch the color on the controller and then switch the mode for the lighting as well. So the switch panel is RGB and to switch the color, you're going to press and hold the on off button and the uh, bottom right button at the same time. So hit this one first, then this one. Hold it. Now the colors are switching and then whichever color you want to keep, when it gets to that color, you can just let off. So if you want green, now we have green. If you want to switch it, do the same thing again until it gets to the color that you want. So when it comes to the switch panel, there's three different lighting settings. One is just your normal switch. You turn the light on, it stays on. There is one where you have to press and hold the button for it to stay on. And as soon as you let off, the light will go off. And there is also a strobe mode. Um, and each individual button can be set to a different mode. So say if you have a light on the back of your vehicle and you want that to be a chase light, um, you can set just that light to be in strobe mode and the rest to be something else. All right, so to switch the modes on this is pretty easy. We're just gonna press and hold the on off button. Okay, now you can see that this is flashing once and shutting off and flashing once and shutting off. That is mode one, and that is just a standard, uh, your standard mode. Press it once more, now it's flashing twice. So this is gonna be where you have to press and hold the button to make the light stay on. So I'll go ahead and select which lights I want to be on this mode, press and hold it, now I have to press and hold the roof light to stay on. As soon as I let off, the light goes off. So let's go ahead and do the pulse or the strobing mode. So press and hold the on off again. Mode one, mode two, this is mode three. Select which light we want. Press and hold the on off button. Okay, now this will be strobe mode. So for example, I have all three switches on a different mode. DRL, I have on your standard style uh, switch mode. Bumper is on your momentary, so you can see it only stays on when I press it. And roof is on strobe. So when you're going back through your modes, this is mode one, you can see that is set to mode one. This is mode two, you can see the bumper is set to mode two. And mode three, the roof is set to strobe. So another feature that this has is, say you have more than one switch on at the same time. We have four different things on. You wanna shut them all off at the same time. You just hit the on off button, all four go out. If you wanna turn all four of them back on at the same time, go ahead and turn the switch panel back on and all four will come back on. We can go ahead and turn all of those off individually as well. So we confirmed everything works. We got all of our switches laid out and whatnot. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this off by putting on our lid. And this is held on by four Phillips head screws. So we'll go ahead 
get that on and we're finished. All right guys, so that's gonna finish up the video on how to install the auxiliary power kit from Yoda Expedition. Hopefully this video makes it super easy for you guys to not only get it installed, but get any sort of aftermarket accessories installed as well. If you wanna pick up one of these kits or one of our brackets, head over to yodaexpedition.com or click the link in the description for that and any sort of aftermarket accessories as well. With that being said, thanks for watching.